In the last tutorial, we looked at what a variable is. You did your activity where you learned um, how to correctly name variables. Now let's actually work with variables in JavaScript. So here I've created a blank document in code. I saved it as variables.html in your Google Drive folder. Go ahead and create a new folder in your Google Drive folder called intro to JavaScript and then save all the files that we're doing in this intro to JavaScript section in that folder. Use your exclamation point and, or exclamation point and tab shortcut to get the basic content of a website in. And our title we changed to variable practice. And I do want you to practice along in this tutorial, but you will have an activity that you'll do in this file um, that will be posted below this video. Okay. All right. So right now, if we load this in a browser window, we just have a blank document. Okay. So we haven't done anything, but let's look at how we create a variable. We're going to begin by using embedded JavaScript. And for the purposes of our intro to JavaScript section, we'll do this in the head section. But when we move on, we're going to learn that it's actually a little better for us to do it right before the body closes. I'll explain that um, next semester. But for right now, let's just add script tags in our head section. And all of our JavaScript needs to be typed in between these um, two tags. Okay, we learned in the last tutorial that to create a variable, we use the keyword var. This is just saying make a place in memory. Lots of programming languages have a keyword that you use to declare a variable. And we could create a variable called number, and we could just do this. This would just be a variable that has the name number, a place in memory that has the name number. And then later on, we could do things with it like give it a value. Um, we could add something to it or do other mathematical equations. But normally programmers, well, lots of times programmers will create their variable and initialize it at the same time. That means create the variable and give it a value. So let's create a variable and give it a value of three, okay? Now this is a numeric value. And if I look in my program right now, nothing's happened because all I've done is say, make a space in my computer's memory and put three in that space. Okay, nothing's printing out to our screen. We don't have any output. For the purposes of us just learning, we're going to learn two really effective ways to get some output on our screen. One is the document.write method. Okay, so document.write is going to write something to the body of our HTML document. Okay, so if I put the variable number here, followed by a semicolon. We'll have to watch out for these semicolons in JavaScript. They're very important. And I go to my browser um, window and refresh. I have a three here. Now, I know mine looks a little different. Um, I'll show you why in just a second, but it does have a three there, okay? <clears throat> so this writes to the document, but we can also do something that's called console.log. And if we do number there, and you load this in your browser, you may not see anything different. But when I load it in my browser window, refresh, I have a three here, and then I also have a three in the console. So where do you find this console? You may not be able to see it on the tutorial because sometimes it cuts off the top of my um, video when I'm recording. But if you, in Chrome, go to view, developer JavaScript console, that will open this console. The shortcut is Command-Alt-J, and I will often just say Command-Alt-J because that's a lot quicker than um, going through all these windows uh, to get to the console. Now, if you are a Lafayette student, this is blocked for you if you are signed into Chrome. So you have two ways that you can get to this. You can either sign out of Chrome so that you are not signed into the browser itself and then this will open back up for you. Or you can use Mozilla Firefox. Mozilla Firefox, it's in a little different location. It's under Tools, 
Web Developer Web Console. And it's Command Alt K in um, Mozilla Firefox. Okay. And just in case you haven't ever opened anything in Mozilla Firefox, I know it's not your default browser, um, you can copy your URL. I mean, this is what it is it's a URL. You can copy your URL even if it's going to a local place on your computer and paste it there and it'll take you to your your page okay all right so now that we know how to get to the console and we um oh i didn't mean to do that uh, we refreshed now we see a three both in our document and a three in our console so we have two ways now to output to our screen using document.write and using um console log Okay, so what are our other variable types? We said we had a number. We can have a number that's also a decimal. So we could have a number value like this. Um, we said that there were string data types. So let's do a variable called text and let's give it hello. Okay, we can also have a string that's a number. So let's look at this. So I can do str number and I can give it a value of 3.14. I'm going to change this back to 3 for the purposes of our tutorial. <clears throat> okay, so a string data type is always in quotation marks. If it is a string data type, we can't do math with it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And then what was the other data type? Do you remember? I wish you were here to tell me because I know you would say Boolean and I would be so proud of you. Let's create a Boolean and let's set it equal to true. Now let's look at the difference in the way that code treats these variables. Notice that they are different colors. Um, depending on what color theme you have, that will be an indication of, hey, you have a string there, there you have a number, um, or you have a Boolean. That's just a slightly different color there. Do not include your Boolean value, either true or false, in quotation marks. If you, if you put it in quotation marks, JavaScript will think it is a string and not a Boolean. Okay, so what can we do with this stuff, okay? So I told you we could write it out. We can print to the console. We can print... Um, to the document. What about doing math? Yeah, we can do math. So let's say, let's take the document.write number, which is three, and let's add three to it. Okay, that's, that's fine. We know what that is. If I refresh my screen, you are not surprised to learn that the value is six, exactly what you expected, right? What happens if you tried to add the value of string number, okay? Number has a numeric data type of three. String number has a string value of 3.14. So if we tried to add those together, let's refresh our screen and see what happens. 3.33.14, hmm, 33.14, that seems weird, right? Okay, JavaScript, so much fun. If you have a string value and you try to add something with the addition operator, this suddenly becomes the concatenation operator. Concatenating means basically putting two things together. To concatenate, What's happening here is it is taking the literal three and it is adding 3.14. So it's just putting them together. It's called concatenation. I can further explain concatenation because we can come down here in our console log and we can take text which has the string literal value of hello and I can also say Mario because I love Mario. So Notice I put a space there because it's literally going to print what's inside those quotation marks. But if I come back to my browser and I refresh, we're going to see it down here in the console. It says, hello, Mario. Okay. That's not all we can print out. So 
I said, you know, we have these bullying operators. We may not quite realize how powerful they are right now. But um, what if I wanted to say, hey, number three, is number three less than 10? Hmm, is number three less than 10? What do you think that's going to be? So this is going to write to the document, refresh, true. Number three is less than 10. What if we change this to greater than? I'm sure you can predict what's going to happen. This is going to change to, mm, you guessed it. I could even assign a new value. Let's create a new variable here. And this time I'm not going to initialize it. I'm just going to say result. Okay. So I'm going to say document.write result equal number greater than 10. Again, it prints false. But if I come down here and just print result, result should have a new value. False. Okay, so what happened here? We created a variable called result. We said, hey, when this code executes, what is number greater than 10? Is number greater than 10 true or false? It said, hey, that's false, and it stored that value in result. Remember, this equal sign is not equal to, it is assigning a value. So in this case, you are assigning false to result. Then here, when we console log the value of result, it prints false, okay? We've really got to um, get used to remembering that um, assignment statements look a little different than they would in your math class. I'm going to delete that, and let's um, kind of look at this a little more. Okay, let's say I want to know what is two times number. I want to store that in result, okay? So if I want, wherever I want the value stored goes on the left side. So I want it stored in result. And I said I wanted to take two times the number. So I could do two times number. I could do number times two. Either one would be correct. I'm only concerned with, um, making sure that the new value is on the right side of my assignment operator and where I want it stored is on the left side of my assignment operator. Okay, I still have my console.log result there. So let me refresh and we should have, what do you think, six? We should have six and we do have six. Okay, so hopefully that's got you a, a little more clear with... Um, different data types, and how to create variables in JavaScript. Okay, using the same file that we just had in this tutorial, um, I'm going to go over your project assignment for this. So do these steps in order. You're going to open that variables.html, delete any remaining code from the script section, create a variable called year born, and assign it your birth year as a numeric data type. Create a variable called current year and assign it the value 2020 as a numeric data type. Create a variable called age. Do not assign it a value. This variable is not initialized. Create a string variable called greeted, greeting and assign it the value of hello, comma, space. There's a space there. As a string data type. Create a string variable called my name and assign it the value of your name as a string data type. Create a statement that subtracts year born from current year and stores that value in the age variable that you created up here, but you didn't assign it a value. Now you're assigning it a value in this, in this step. Use the console log to print the value of age. Use document.write to print greeting concatenated with the value of my name. When you finish, you should have something that says hello in your name. And then in console log, you should have your age, okay?